Hey, in this video I'll be uh, showing you a demonstration of a program that I just came up with. Somebody on Reddit had requested a uh, serial monitor I2C interface thing, so uh, they stated that they couldn't find anything, and uh, this is a situation I've run into before where I could have used something like this, so I figured uh, I'll give it a try. So on the right side you'll see I have the program here. I'm not really gonna go into it. You just pretty much upload this to uh, any Arduino and then they'll give you the interface. This is going to be more a demonstration of how to use the interface. So just real quick, I have a TNC3 here, but like I said, uh, this code should work on uh, any Arduino as long as you have over 22 uh, KB of uh, RAM and 4 KB of RAM. As you can see, those are the usage stats down here on the Arduino. As I said, I have a TNC3 here, and I have a little uh, sensor board here. This actually has four sensors on it, an accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer, and barometer. But uh, So I'm just using this for the ITC interface, and I'll show you how that goes real quick. All you really need is uh, power, ground, SCL, and SDA. Those are pretty much the only connections you need. On the left half of my screen, I just have the data sheet pulled up for ADXL345 showing some of the registers here. So let me go ahead and uh, run it. I'm using this uh, TNC so it has its own little loader which is slow sometimes but uh, that's no big deal. Alright, so let's go to serial monitor and this is the interface you get to it. Uh, this is the main menu and it'll uh, show up uh, every time you uh, I'll pretty much need it, so let's go over it real quick. For the main menu, if you hit uh, zero, it clears tasks and shows this menu, and you'll see it a little bit later. This clear tasks is used when you do uh, automatic uh, register reading, uh, as you can see here, number four, at uh, MS interval. So zero is pretty much just a uh, clear and show the menu again. One is uh, to enter or change the device address. If we look down here, it says current device is 0x0. Zero zero. So this program doesn't have any default addresses programmed in. So every time you want to work with a device, you'll have to enter in or change the I2C address of that device. The next option is to a write, write, write a register. So if you press 2, you could write a register. 3 is a read register, and this is only a single register. 4 is read register x at y millisecond interval. So this is automatically updating if you want to keep continuously read a register over and over again. While you're doing stuff with the hardware, you could uh, use this and it uh, works pretty well. Next option is uh, read Y bytes from register X. This is for multi-byte registers. As you can see on the left side here, there's a uh, X axis data 0, X axis data 1, Y axis data 0, Y axis data 1. These are split up into high bytes and low bytes. So if you want to get uh, the right data out of it, you'd want to read uh, multiple bytes, either just two bytes for each axis, or I could show you in a little bit, you could actually read all six bytes at once. Now my program doesn't combine those bytes into an actual value, but it at least tells you the data. So if you want to uh, grab the data and then do the conversion yourself, or if you want to modify the code to do that conversion, you guys can go right on ahead. The next one is number six, which is uh, scans for I2C devices. So in case you don't know the address, or maybe address were changed, or pretty much anything along those lines, you hit six and it'll uh, scan for all the I2C devices on the bus. That's pretty fast, and I'll show that as well. And then I have a star dot, and the pretty much just says enable options, just show this menu. And then you could also do dark commands instead of going through this interface and uh, hitting enter multiple times. You could just type in the commands directly, so you could uh, read, and then you put in the register, so you could type in something like read 0x00 to read register 0. You could read register, comma, interval. This is the, these are the same things as these up here, except these up here, you have to go through that interface, entering one value at a time, whereas these you could just type out the whole command, and it just goes. You could write register, comma, value. These are examples, so write into register 1f, the value 42 or CLS, which just pretty much does a whole bunch of new lines to clear the screen. So it's asking you to enter menu item or direct command. So let's start off with scanning the bus. So as you see, that was pretty much almost instantaneous. And it tells you, you found a device at uh, address 0x1e, 
0x53, 0x69, 0x77. Now you'll see these other things afterwards and because a lot of the stuff requires you to uh, know hexadecimal, binary, and uh, decimal numbers, this entire interface, all the values, you could either put it in hexadecimal, binary, or just integers and it displays all the data in all three formats too. So at the same time you could put it in any three formats or and it actually tells you the data in all three formats. So as you can see this one's actually only uh, six bit. It's two bits shorter. That's because there's two zeros and when uh, the serial monitor displays binary numbers it removes the uh, leading zeros. Same thing for hex as, up, as you can see up here. It's zero x zero but it's actually zero x zero zero. These are a byte. So now that we have uh, uh, address list of all the devices, we could actually start exploring them. Now I know the accelerometer off the top of my head is actually this device, the 0x53, so let's configure that. So let me clear that, and as you can see uh, I just hit 0 and it says clear task and show the menu, but it also has this stuff up here, so if you get a full screen you just type in CLS, and all this stuff is still there, it's just a bunch of new lines, so it gives you a nice clear screen. So let's do one. And it asks you enter device address. Example zero small x big C A. As you can see, the capitalization of the letters doesn't matter. So you could use a small x. You could use big letters. You could use small letters. And then these four ex first four examples are uh, these first four examples are hexadecimal numbers. The next two examples are binary, either small b, big b, and then the last one is just an integer value. And like I said, you could use all input can either be hex binary decimal and then the output is shown in all three as well so let's define it as 0x 53 and then you just hit enter now down here it does need to be set to either new line or carriage return or both if you don't do anything it's not going to go through so you got to make sure one of these is set okay back to the code now as you can see we chose one we put an address and it tells you the device address changed to 0x53 or the binary equivalent or the decimal equivalent and now if we show the menu again you can see the device has been updated you don't have to reshow the menu this is just a confirmation screen so every time you bring up the menu in the future it'll show you those values now that we have set a device to use now we could start actually doing stuff with it so just let's start off with reading a register so reading a register is 3 so let's type in 3 hit enter and ask you for the register address. Now this is where the screen on the left comes in. These are all the ad register addresses available to us publicly listed anyway. I'm sure this device has a lot more registers. They just don't list them here and who knows what they do. So just real quick, going through them, let's read the device ID. So you can see register 0, decimal equivalent 0, the name should be device ID, and it's a read-only register so you can't write to it. And it tells you the reset value of what it should be. So let's go ahead and read do that so over here type in again I said you could do 0 x 0 you could do 0 x 0 0 or you could put in the decimal equivalent of 0 so it doesn't really matter so let's do 0 x 0 and then tells you response here the three stars is register 0 x 0 is and all three numbers are the register and then equals this value so if you look on the chart you don't see a hexal decimal number you don't see a integer number you just see a binary reset value, which should be 11100101. One, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one. And looking at our response, we get 11100101. One, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one. So this is a confirmation that everything is working as it should be. And it just tells you the all three numbers so you know which one to use. So this is just one of those cases where it's good to be able to put input all three and to also be able to uh, read all three. For example, let's write to a register now. Now I know this device actually won't give you any data back until you set up a few control registers. For example, let me read one of the registers. So let's go to, we could type in read. And then looking at the left side, we could either do register 0x32, which is the decimal value of uh, 50. And it should be 0 because we haven't powered up. So let's do that. So 0x32. And we get a value back of 15. 
Oh, I see why. <laughs> I didn't reset it earlier. Once you set the control register, which I did earlier, it keeps it until the power is connected. So let me just power cycle this thing. Okay, that's reset. Let's try that again. So. All right, and that, this is how it should be initially. So we read the value and it says zero, and then it doesn't matter how we orient the sensor, it'll always be zero. For example, let me show you that. So read, and let's do an interval of 250 milliseconds. And as you can see, this is one of the features where it just keeps reading the register until you hit zero. So just to verify that, see, it seems dead, and that's because it's not set up properly. So let's hit zero, stop that. And then we're going to hit CLS just to get that other stuff out of the way. So now let's set this guy up. As you can see on the left side, there's a bunch of registers. I'm not actually going to go into them. What I do have, though, is just a little uh, file I had earlier, which tells me which registers I have to write to for to get this thing to work. One of them is a power remote register, and the other one is a data format register. So let's set that up. So right. Now you do have to be careful here because you can't put spaces where they don't belong. You have to write them in the exact format that they're listed here. So if I wanted to do something like zero and put a space here, this would cause an issue with the program. So you can't have unnecessary white spaces. And when we look at the screen here, when we do a write command, it says write zero x31 and then three stars gives you the response so register 0x31 equals and then what it does here is it doesn't give you back what you put in here it actually reads the register so it writes it and then this equals is the actual data that it read back out of the register so if the register change doesn't take what you set and what you get back will be different values but in this case what we set and what we get back are the same value that means the register change took effect if it didn't take effect these two numbers would be different so that's one and then here's the other one we set it to 0x08 and you can see it's 0x08 now just for a demonstration let's change one of these registers to something just different so right and we'll do it binary so 1010 hit enter and I can see we changed the same register twice so right register 2d with 0x08 and it was set to 0x and there's a zero there that's not shown, but zero eight. And as you can see down here, we changed it to zero B one zero one zero, and we changed it to zero B one zero one zero. So as you can see, these changes do take effect. But let's put it back to what it's supposed to be so it actually works. All right, and now the accelerometer should be set up properly to read us data. So let's clear the screen. Let's just do a single read. And there we go, we get a value of 15, which is what we got initially when it was already set up. Now the reason I did 50 is because, as you can see on the left side, 50 is the same as 0x32. So you could, like I said, you could do binary, you could do hexadecimal, or you could do uh, just integer values. That's through all prompts in the entire program. So it's not just this menu or any specific menus. All right, now let's set up to read continuously, and then we'll actually move the sensor. So let's read 50, comma, 250. And they go, right now we're reading data, so let's start playing with it. So this axis, it didn't change much. And that axis, it didn't change much. So it's probably not this axis. Let's go the other way. Let's see here. We get 140-something. We get 140-something again. This is probably the lower 8 bits, because it goes both ways or see I'm not sure which uh, byte is the byte it is it might be a the low byte or the high byte we'd have to look further into the data sheet but as you see right now the sensors are working and we're getting data out of it now this probably isn't that useful in itself because you don't have the full 16 bits it uh, gives you back but it's just to verify that things are working correctly and that you're getting data that you expect so let's cancel that let me show you one of the other commands now let's uh, read let's read all six bytes then so 
that's option five. So we hit five. And then read, enter the register address. We'll start a register address 50. Well, again, like I said, we could do zero x32, it doesn't matter. And then how many bytes to read? Let's do all six. And there's the data from all six bytes. 15, zero, which are the x, four, zero, which are the y, and then 126, zero, which are the z. Now I don't have that, uh, I don't have a command to read multiple bytes over an interval because I don't really think it's necessary. This should tell you the data you need for any kind of troubleshooting. As you can see, if I, it starts at 32 and goes to 37. If we look over here, it goes up to 37. Now, just for an example, this only goes up to decimal value 57, but let's read something out of that range. So let's try that again. So if we do 5, let's start at 50 again. But let's, let's read 50 registers. So let's see what we get here. As you can see, most of these registers are zero, but there are a few registers which aren't listed, listed which do have values. For example, we have 32 through 39. Those are listed, sure. But then we have a register down here, 0x40. We have no idea what this is, and it's not documented anywhere. There's a couple more of them, too. So if we look further down, there's another register here, so 0x4f, 0x52, 0x57, and so on and so forth. So you could actually explore unknown registers with this, try reading them, try writing them, see if they take effect, so on and so forth. Uh, let's, let's try writing to a register we know is a read-only register. So let's try writing to register 0, which over here says is read-only. So let's try writing to it and see what happens. So write, nope, 0 comma now just to get a comparison let's do zero binary zero zero one zero zero one hit enter as you can see we tried to write to register zero a binary value of zero b zero zero one zero zero one now what it gave us back is a binary value of zero b one one zero zero one zero one which is what it says over here in the documentation so as you can see when you try to write to a read-only register you get a discrepancy between what you wrote and what it read back. So this is one way you could verify if a register is a read or write only. They just try writing data and then just compare these two values and you'll know if it's read or write only. But we won't go into exploring what these registers are. But as you can see here there are certainly values there. There's four, there's two, but who knows what they do. They're not they're undocumented as you can see. Let's go back to the main menu. So Let's try giving an invalid value. As you can see, if I type in an invalid code, it just says appear invalid input and redisplays the menu. So we showed number zero, we showed number one, we did number two, we did number three, we did number four, and five, and six. So we pretty much took care of everything from what it looks like. We read a register, we read it over a null, we, we wrote to it with the command, and we cleared the screen. So this is pretty much just a program that I think was requested on Reddit. So I know I'll be using it quite a lot for any time I do, I do I2C stuff. For example, I have uh, another sensor board here, which is either SPI or I2C, and I'm gonna be able to play with it directly without writing any really code to interface with it by using this Explorer program. So just wanted to show you one of the projects I did. Let me know your thoughts, and you guys are can feel free to use this code. I'll link it in the information bar. Thanks for watching.